everyone, this is Yolanda from the All Class channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to knit this uh, cowl. Um, it has a six stitch cable. I'm using the uh, jumbo yarn which is a weight seven. I used the Red Heart Grande but you can use um, other yarns as well. This is a nice thick, thick uh, yarn. I also am using a 15 millimeter knitting um, needle here and then I also you're gonna need a big yarn scissors, yarn needle something to clip your yarn with a crochet uh, excuse me a knitting uh, hook a cable hook or knitting needles this is kind of small so I kind of cheated and used one of the chunkier uh, double double pointed needles that I had. This is the biggest one I had, which is this eight millimeters. So that is what I'm using here. So I hope you'll enjoy this project and let's get the party started. To begin my project, I'm going to be uh, casting on 16 stitches using a long tail cast on. You can use whichever method you prefer. I'm just gonna start a loop here and I want to make sure I have enough yarn um, left over so that I can easily sew it in uh, at the end. So here I'm just going to start with that slip loop. Remember that first stitch counts as a stitch when you're knitting. And I'm just going to do a long tail cast on. There's some vid uh, videos here on my channel teaching you the different ways of casting on. This way would be with the long tail to the left and then the, the yarn that's coming off of the ball on the right since I am right handed. I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn and cast on. This is already one, so then two, three. And 16 stitches. Okay, here I have my 16 stitches. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn my work over. Now here, what I want to do is um, I want to um, work patterns of purl and knit for the first uh, uh, five rows. So we're going to be alternating. So on this side, I'm going to go ahead and start with three purl. I'm just going to make sure I get that tail out of the way. I knit a continental style, which means that I hold the yarn in my left hand. If you knit English style, then you would hold it on your right. I will, uh, I'm not a good at English knitting, but I'll try to show you both ways. So here you're going to your pattern is going to be purl three, knit two, purl six, knit two, purl three, and then on the next row you're going to do the opposite. You're going to knit the knits and purl the purls. So here for the purl, the yarn has to be in front. So I'm going to put in my needle from the right to the left. The needle has the yarn has to go over the yarn like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring it down. Then once I have that stitch on, I can go ahead and slip it off my work. So here's one, two. This is kind of a little awkward because I'm working on the table with really big needles, which I'm not used to. And then three. Now I'm going to knit two. The, for the knitting, the yarn, the yarn comes from the back, so, and then the needle goes from left to right. I'm going to grab that one, two, Purl six. Now, if you were an English knitter, then you would hold the yarn in your right hand and then you would be wrapping the yarn. You would still have to bring the yarn to the front, bring in your needle, and then you're going to wrap it around and bring it over. Sorry, let me get that tail out of the way. Let me do that again. I'm not an English knitter, so you can obviously see that I'm not good at this. The yarn is still in the front. I'm going to bring it from right to left, wrap the yarn and then slip it right off. So you you can do whichever is more comfortable to you. So that's one, two, and then here, three. And then I'm gonna switch back to the style that I'm comfortable with. Four, five, and six. And now I'm going to knit two, one, 
two and then I'm going to purl the last three. One, two, and three. Okay, so this is my first row. These are not the cable rows yet. I'm just doing my foundation. So now here for rows for the rows two, 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 five. I'm going to be just doing the opposite. So what I mean by that here now, whenever I turn my work, this is my first row, row one. Then now here, I'm going to knit the knit, purl the pearls until I go all the way around, all the way to the end, turn my work over. And now I'm going to purl the pearls, knit the knits until I continue until I have five okay, rows. So here I've done my five rows. And if you're new to knitting, you can count your rows by these little V points. So here's one, two, three, four, five. This is going to be my sixth row. And the reason this is not a complete repeat because our repeats have eight rows or nine rows. But here when we see them up, you're gonna see that it's a, a, our partial um, uh, pattern and then the other from the end when we finish. So here, and you can use whatever seaming technique you like. So here, Normally you would just use a regular um, cable hook or cable needle, but the trick for this here, so that you don't get, sometimes you get a little hole when you work your cables when they're twisting over, um, is usually because you did the cable row, uh, cable section too tight. And if I use this, it might come out a little too tight. I'm gonna try to kind of fudge it a little bit with this. I wish I had an actual, um, same size would be ideal, but we don't have it, so I'm just going to try to work with this. So here, what we're going to do here, we're going to work our first three knit, and then our first, second purl. Then these six stitches are going to be the cable. I hope I'm not being too like basic, base, too basic, but I wanted to make sure that everybody understands. So here, I'm going to go ahead and knit my first three stitches. And I'm sorry, you can hear it. The needles hitting the table here one two and three and now I'm gonna furl the next two so I'm bringing my yarn to the front one and two now here I made my cables to lean to the left so my cables as you can see here they're leaning to the left so in order to do that, I'm going to slip off these first three. This is a six stitch repeat. So here, uh, six stitch cable. So here I'm going to slip off my first three stitches without making them really tight. See, I don't want it to get tight down here. If I, you want your cables to lean to the left, you're going to bring your work to the front. If you want the cables to lean to the right, then you will bring those to the back. Okay. Right now we're just kind of ignoring these stitches. I'm going to bring it to the front, I'm going to pick up my work, and then I'm going to knit my next three that are still on my needle. It's kind of getting in the way because this, this is pretty big. Normally it wouldn't be that big. So here I'm going to go one, two, not too tight, and then three. Once I've done those three, I hope I was in the camera there. Now. I'm going to go ahead, drop this one, and pick up the needles that were the stitches that are on what would tr traditionally be a cable needle or cable hook. And then I'm going to finish knitting these. So it's one, two, and I'm trying not to make these too tight because I want to avoid that little gap that you get when they're too tight. So three. Now my cable has been made there. And now you can kind of see that it's starting to twist. Okay. Oops, sorry. I apologize for that alarm. So here now you're seeing that the cable has been made and it's leaning to the left because I brought the work, those first three stitches to the front. Now here, I'm just going to continue in my pattern. I'm going to furl the next two. One and two. And then I knit the last three. 
screw these over here. Then so let me bring the yarn to the back. One, two, and three. Okay, so let me show you here what we've done. So now that cable is actually been done. It's twisting to the left. Now when I'm going to turn my work over and now I don't have to worry about these. I'm just going to go ahead and work like I was before. Purl the purl, knit the knit, all the way until I have done seven rows. So here then, you're going to go ahead and just repeat that pattern. I'm going to purl the purl, knit the knit for seven rows. And when we come back on the eighth row, the cable, oh, I should, I should mention this. When you work your cables, the cables, the turning ones, they're always worked on the front, on the right side. So this is the right side of our work. This is the wrong side of the work. The, the wrong side is we're just following the pattern, purling purls, knitting knits. Only on the right side is where we're going to work these cable turns, okay? So here I'm going to go ahead and work for seven rows of doing purling the purls, knitting the knits, and then we'll come back and work on the eighth row, which will be the completing of that first cable pattern. Okay, I've done that first row after the cable turn, and now you can see that it's starting to set that design apart. I'm going to do my finish my rows here, do six more, and then we'll come back on the eighth row. You're just going to do the cable repeat. Okay, here I've done my seven rows. Now this is going to be my eighth row. If you lose track, if you could count it by um, just counting your stitches. So here, this one, if you open it up, the one that's twisting, so you can see that's going sideways, this one, you can even open it up. There's a little space there. That's what I was saying. If you do it too tight, it seems to make the hole bigger. So this one is our turning cable row. So that's not the row I'm talking about. So that was the last cable row where we did the cable. So here you're going to count. Let me see if I can get this a little bit more. You're going to count this row after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here is my eighth row where I'm going to do my cables. Remember, our cables are always done on the right side of the work. There's no need to put it here because you wouldn't be able to see it. And the, this is the way the back of the cables where they're twisting looks. So here then once again, I would just knit my first three stitches, purl these. I'm going to take these three off on my needle, pull them to the front of the work, knit my next three, then go ahead and knit the ones that are on the needle, purl two, and then knit three. When I turn my work over again, then I'm going to repeat the same thing for seven rows, knitting the knits, purling the purls, and then on the eighth row, you do your cable again. You're going to do that until you have seven complete pattern repeats of your cable. So here, I'm not even on my first one. Well, this is going to be my first complete repeat. You're going to do that until you have seven of these um, full cable repeats. So I'm going to do the cable one more time for you and then that way you'll be able to do it. When you finish your last cable, when you finish your last pattern, which you're going to finish with these uh, cable row, the seven three feet, then you're just going to do knit, and knit the, you're going to turn your work, knit the knits, furl the furls for three rows. Then you're going to go ahead and we're going to bind off and then we'll seam it. So here, let me show you one more time that knit row. Let me see if I could get a little bit further back. Maybe it might help. The cable row, excuse me. So here I'm going to knit my first three. One. And of course, when you're knitting on your lap, it'll be more comfortable than trying to do it in this awkward position on top of a table. So here's knit two. I mean knit three. Purl two. I want to, okay. Now. I'm going to slip off these three stitches. The first three, one, two, and three. I'm going to hold them to the front. I don't want to tighten that up at all. And then I'm going to knit the next three, one, two, and three. I can draw this needle now, pick up the needle with the work on here and knit the last, the three stitches that are in here. One, two, and three. I can put this aside. Then I have two purls next. 
one, two, and then knit the last three. One, two, and three. Oops, I had grabbed the wrong, split the yarn on this one here. So let me fix that here. One, two, three. So then that is my first complete pattern. You're going to repeat this from uh, your cable all the way till you have seven more of these. And then we'll come back, work our last three rows, and then you can seam it up. And so then now here that I've done this pattern, my complete pattern, then I would just turn it for seven rows. I'm going to do purl the purl, knit the knits, turn it around, knit the knits, purl the purl until I've done seven rows. And then I go ahead and do my next cable row. And I repeat this all over again until I have seven of these complete cable pattern returns. If you're doing, it should fit most women and most men teenagers if you're doing it for a child you can just make uh, less repeats if you would like to make it shorter you could try it on yourself and see how it's fitting okay everyone so now I finished knitting all of my rows and now I just need to bind off if you're new to knitting when you finish you need to secure these stitches so they're no longer live stitches meaning that when I remove my needle it's not going to unravel it will be finished uh, and secure just like the beginning here so here, when you bind off, you can also bind off with a crochet hook and there's uh, or the needle. So here for this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and knit the first two here, one and two. And then after you have those two, you're going to pass this stitch um, over the other one. So here you're going to get the needle, go here to the front and you're going to pull the stitch in the back through and I'm doing it a little bit loose because I don't want it to be too tight. Now I do that again, knit once again and then you get this left needle, go through the left to the right and then you're going to pull this needle, pull this stitch through, pull off the stitch and then drop that off. I'm going to get a little closer so you can see, but that's how you're going to work all the way across. Knit the next one. Now put the left needle left to right in the front there, and then you're going to pull this stitch right off, right there. And I'm going to do that all the way across until I finish binding off all of my stitches. It takes a little practice, so if you need to hold this with your finger, you can. And these are really awkward needles because for me, I'm not used to using such big needles. Usually I do like smaller needles, maybe four millimeters or so. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off and then we'll come back and then I'll show you how long we're going to need, what we need to do to seam it. Okay, I'm coming to the end, and now that I've done this, you can see that these stitches are secure and they're not going to unravel. So this is my last one here. And now what I'm going to do here, before I pull this out, I want to get enough yarn so that I'll be able to make the seam, and usually about three times the width is okay. Um, so I'm just going to go uh, here, one, two, and three. It's always better to have more than not enough. And I wanted to have enough to be able to weave in that tail. So then here I can just go ahead, remove my needle, and I'm just going to pull this tail right through there. And now it's secure and it won't fall apart. Now we're going to seam. You can use whichever method you like to seam your two edges. Here's one, here's the edge, and you're going to seam it this way. And um, so use whatever method you like. I really like to keep the stitches kind of the pattern kind of going so that these match here, these match here, and it's a little bit of a cleaner transition. 
Um, it just, if you don't block it, of course, it's going to scrunch up. So this might look a little bit uh, longer here, but this is towards the back of your neck. So that will be okay. And then here where I ended up changing yarn, I do have some tails that I need to weave in. Um, so I need to do that as well. Okay, so I finished seaming my edge here and I tried to get the uh, stitches to line up so that it looks a little bit neater and now I just need to sew in my tails or weave them in. This is a pretty big yarn so I did end up having to re-thread it a couple times because it did come out, kind of came out of the place that I wanted it to be. So I'm just kind of going in through this seam here in the back. And just securing it. Okay, I finished uh, both of them and I think they came out great. Um, like I said, if you want to make a child one, you could do less repeats and it'll make it a nicer size for a child. So this one I had already done. I haven't blocked them yet or anything, so they're still a little bit kind of wonky. Like you could see this one, I was still working with the yarn. I still haven't finished all the tails yet. But um, that's what it is. It's a measures about uh, 10 inches wide and I mean high and about 30 inches around. So it fits really great around your neck. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video tutorial. I know that I might have taken a little more time for the cables. If you're an um, already experienced knitter, that probably might have been frustrating. But if you're learning how to knit, I wanted to make sure that I went through all the steps so that way you can learn how to make beautiful cables. They really give you a lot of a kind of pop to your work and it's kind of like the, I, I always say that it gives you more bang for your buck. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, go to my blog, allcraftschannel.com for the written pattern. I'll put the links also below the video description box and the link where you can purchase the written pattern if you don't want to have any ads on it. So have a great day and remember always that God loves you.